to pray and praise, to confess our sins, and to celebrate the forgiveness of the benevolent Lord. We are called to look at one another, to help one another, and to accept one another as siblings of Christ our Lord. One or two or hundreds, we gather, have been, as we gather, we have been called to do, to glorify God in worship. Holy Spirit, as your word is read and preached, pass among your gathered people, opening minds to increase understanding, opening hearts to bind us together in your love. Let us turn now our hearts to the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess that we have strayed from right paths of righteousness and peace. We have dishonored you, ourselves, and your creation. We repent of these hurtful ways. We spend far too much time worrying. We wallow in what might be or what should be instead of embracing what is with bravery. Fear holds us back from being the fully present stewards that you believe us to be. We pray for your help as we learn to care for creation, human and non-human, without being overwhelmed by worry. Guide our feet into the ways of truth and peace, even peace with our own past. We ask these things in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amid the countless things that human beings cannot fully comprehend about God, there stands this. God so loves us, as to bathe us with grace and feed us with mercy and forgive us our sins. Confident in the love of God, know that through Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Good morning. Our first scripture reading today is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faith exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. And now Lynn has special music. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lynn, for that truly beautiful piece. Our second scripture reading today is Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about everything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. Thanks be to God for the reading of this word. Thank you, Mitchell. Now is the time in the service when we share a gesture of peace. Uh, Jolie, would you like to help with this? Or are you going to be a little shy? because I'm not Pastor Christine. <laughs> Everyone, please stand. Use your microphone <laughs> so other people can hear us this morning. I bet Miss Colleen or Miss Susan or Mommy and Daddy have told you stories about Jesus, right? Yeah? What have you heard about Jesus? Not much? <laughs> okay. Yes, he's in the Bible, isn't he? 
a lot of stories about Jesus in the Bible. Well, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you will, this morning is to take this paper and this box of crayons and think real hard about what Jesus looks like to you and make a picture of that. Okay? And, and then I want you to fold that picture all up and put it in your pocket. Well, maybe on the day you do the picture, you can wear something that has a pocket, okay? Okay. <laughs> and carry that picture in your pocket all day. And when you go to bed at night, tuck that picture under your pillow so that you can remember that Jesus is with you everywhere you go and is with you in everything you do, watching out for you and taking care of you. Okay? <laughs> okay, you gonna lead us in prayer? Yeah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be my name. I kingdom come, I will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debtors, and we forgive our debtors. We are not in temptation. Move us from evil. Can the hour in your birth. Amen. Those are washable crayons, by the way. <laughs> I'm not terribly child knowledgeable, but I got that one down. <laughs> Now's the time in our service when we share our joys and concerns. I'd like to start this morning by sharing a joy. I had the opportunity this week uh, to go out and spend time with Ruth Thompson and her son, David. They are doing well, and it was a lot of fun to be out and to be able to see Knox Lake and um, just enjoy their company, their hospitality, and the great outdoors. Um, we also had some concerns uh, that Pastor Christine passed on in the email that she sent out. Uh, we need to keep Sharon Slatzer's family in prayer as they grieve her loss. Ryan Roston, who is suffering from brain cancer. Uh, George, who is recovering slowly from COVID. And any updates on Eric? Eric continues to, and Lisa, continue to need our prayers as uh, he moves forward with further procedures for his heart. Is there anything else? Anyone else? Yes, Susan. Linda Smith with a brain tumor. We want to keep her in prayers for healing. Oh, just a minute. Go ahead, Sue. Yay! <laughs> Great. 
I have a concern. Um, a young lady named Maddie went off to college two weeks ago, freshman, going to be a nurse. She called her mother and she said, I want to come home. So they thought she was homesick and they encouraged her to stay, of course. Okay. Well, Maddie got sick. And she called and she said, I need to come home. I don't feel well. And nobody here is playing the game. They aren't wearing masks. They aren't doing anything. Fanny has COVID-19. She's very, very ill. Her mother has it and her dad can't go home now. And uh, she needs your prayers and her mom. And it's just one of those things that isn't fair. So now they've told her she's going to stay at home. They're closing the college. She can do it online. And she said, how do I do lab work as a nurse online? She will not get her money back. They are not giving money back now. They're sending them home. So we need to pray in that era too, because a lot of us know what it's like to go out there and try to do something good. All right. So anyway, her name is Maddie, so help me pray for her, okay? Sorry. Doom and gloom. <laughs> okay. Any other people we should lift up in prayers? Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, you have heard our concerns of the people named and the people unnamed. Keep them close. Help them walk whatever journey they will be walking going forward. We ask that you be our refuge now from the noise of the world and the care of our own spirits. Give us a quick and tender conscience that in all things we may be guided by the Spirit. Calm our passions, direct our affections, repress our sinful ways, that we may know your presence and feel your movement in our lives now and always. Amen. The gospel lesson that Ashton read this morning talks about sin and how we as Christians are to address sinful ways that we see in the world. Individually, we address it. In small groups, we can address it. And as the church, as a whole, we can address what we see as sin. The goal is for forgiveness. The goal is to help someone back. The goal is to follow what Jesus has taught us. I struggled with this scripture 
because the first thing that jumped into my mind was a police officer kneeling on the neck of another human being and people standing around just peacefully watching. Now I know that there's a lot more to the story than we actually saw in that imagery, but my reaction was not very Christ-like. I can honestly say I thought this was horrible. From there, I went on to think about all the looting and the violence and the destruction and the deaths that we have seen in the last few months. What is the message? What are people trying to tell us? How is this helping? Our businesses are already at risk from having been shut down due to COVID. And now there's one more thing, one more hurdle that has to be jumped over to even just survive, for people to even have a livelihood. This week, the governor spoke about human trafficking and the problem that that is in the state of Ohio. And that reminded me of a person who wrote on our website and requested our prayers. I don't remember exactly, I have to be honest, whether it was prayers to get them out of human trafficking or prayers to keep them out of human trafficking, but I do remember how much that touched me on that morning when Pastor Christine told us about that person. There have been times, I'm sure, that all of you can think of, of like situations, when you have seen something, when you have heard something that has been not very Christ-like. The good news, the good news is that we don't have to have the answer. And when we respond in our humanness, which all too often we may do, God is there with forgiveness. God is with us. Can you feel it? Do you feel the spirit here today moving amongst us, forgiving us, giving us the love that only God can give? For where two or three are gathered in God's name, there God will be. Thanks be to God.
God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.